Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Eka Baruch Shem Kevo Hear, O Israel, the Lord I, Yah, the Lord is one. Blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah and bless your name.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. On the fifth day, we get up this morning seeking him first. The kingdom of the most high Yah and all his righteousness, knowing that all things shall be added unto us. Therefore, we come seeking, knocking, and asking this morning for knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. I'm talking about citizenship. I'm talking about citizenship. I'm talking about the importance of knowing who you are and that we operate in kingdom principles for kingdom living. On day five, five is the number of Torah. Five is the number of grace. So the Most High Yah has given us a constitution. And that constitution gives us our rights. Because we are law-abiding citizens. Oh, we walk in the law of the Most High Yah. Yahuwah said, oh, think not that I've come to destroy or abolish the law. I've come to fulfill it. Mm -hmm. I've come to actually give you an unshakable kingdom. Thou kingdom come, thou will be done on earth as it is in heaven. All you have to do is make an application. I don't know why we think that, you know, after we begin to cross over Hebraically, sometimes that Greek mindset will rise up, that religious mindset will rise up, and we think we don't have to do anything. But the word says, faith without works is dead. It actually says it's impossible to please the Most High Yah without faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. Oh, Noah found grace. Abraham found grace. So we have to know right now, grace is the enablement. See, I <laughs> that law that was written on tablets of stone, I'm going to make a new covenant with you. Mm. Not like the covenant that I made with your fathers, your forefathers, and they did break it when I brought them out of the wilderness. But I'm going to take my covenant according to Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31 through 33. And I'm going to put it in your inward parts. Come on now, that's grace right there. That's the enablement to walk out the constitution of the Most High Yah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put it on your inward parts. I'm going to give you the enablement to walk out things that you think you cannot walk out because greater is he mm -hmm. that is in you than he that was ever in this world. So that's the reason why we have to contend for the faith. We have to make sure that we know how to bind and loose with the keys of the kingdom. Yeah. As we continue to understand kingdom concept, you have to understand who you are. And that the Most High Yah made you a ruler from the very beginning. We are kings and queens ruling in the earth realm. So we have to know about citizenship. And I'm not talking about the citizenship of this world. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the kingdom of the Most High Yah. So let's study this morning and get into this teaching about the concept of kingdom citizenship. See, you've never been taught about the kingdom. So we're going to continue this series until you renew your mind. The word says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You're going to have to cast down vain imaginations that exalt itself against the knowledge of the Most High Yah. He said, I will no longer have you ignorant of Hasatan devices. And the main thing Hasatan wants to do is keep you ignorant. 
because he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And long as we keep walking around in ignorance, you know, Hasatan is like, yeah, keep on doing a, a good thing for the wrong reason. Hmm. Keep on giving that salvation message. Keep on giving a healing message. Keep on praying like, you know, praying in tongues. You know, keep on doing a good thing for the, you know, wrong reason. Hmm. There was only one message that Yahuwah bore. Repent to Shuva. Change your way of thinking for the kingdom of the Most High Yah is at hand. And we are kingdom citizens. I am a law abiding citizen. And I'm thanking the Most High Yah for it right now. Because see, the scales fall off your eyes and you begin to see things differently. No matter how you want to go with something, you begin to see things differently. You begin to truly lay aside every weight that so easily beset you. You begin to really cast your cares on the Most High Yah because he cares for you. Your mind doesn't think the same way that it used to think when you're walking in this kingdom concept. You're constantly reminding yourself that you are not walking in the world. You're in a kingdom mindset. You're kings and queens walking this thing out. And when you begin to get that revelation, you don't think the way you used to think. Hmm. You just don't do it. Even if your flesh wants to rise up and think a certain way, you'd be like, uh-uh, I'm in the kingdom. I don't know what this world is doing, but I am in a kingdom. So we have to be careful to guard our ear gates when we're walking in this kingdom mindset. Mm -hmm. We have to be careful to guard our eye gates when we're walking in this kingdom mindset. We definitely have to be careful of the words that we speak because we're in a decade of declaration. And the words that we speak, knowing that a kingdom concept, those words become law. So you have to change your way of thinking. Mm -hmm. Repent, Teshuvah. For the kingdom of the Most High Yah is at hand. So come on, let's get our understanding of the concept of kingdom citizenship. Well, Most High, how come lifting up everyone on Facebook Live this morning? The ones that are listening live and the ones that will listen later. Give them a kingdom mindset. Write down, have them to be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Have them to know right now that so a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So we want to walk in kingdom, kingdom principles and concepts and statues and commandments at all times. Bring it to our remembrance. Help us not to lean to our own understanding. But in all our ways, acknowledge you because you are directing our path. You're the author and finisher of our what? Faith. We thank you right now that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of the Most High Yah. So he that have an ear this morning, let him hear with the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit of the Most High Yah is saying, Holy Spirit, lead and guide me into all truth. Give me revelation of your word like never before. Have me to stand on your word from Genesis to Revelation. I have messengers that are on assignment for me. Come on, Michael, war in the earth realm right now. Raphael, bring healing like never before. Go through every hospital, every sick room, every nursing home, and begin to touch the lives on everyone that is laying in these hospitals, laying on these ventilators. I ask the Holy Spirit right now to breathe on them. Let your spirit just breathe on them. Yah, you were the first one that blew your very breath into man, and he became a living soul. So I thank you right now for healing that's taking place as Raphael is being dispatched right now. Gabriel, send the message. It's already done. And Uriel, light up every dark place that we may see. Hallelujah and bless your name. Decrease me as you give the increase. I'm not sufficient of myself. All sufficiency lies on the inside of you. And I will forever give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. 
And it's in the mighty, mighty name of Yahuwah, I pray. Amen, 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 and amen. The word says if two or three gather together in his name that he would be in the midst. The word says if two touch and agree on anything, it shall be done. And I know I can't do nothing this morning without this word being established through the law, the prophets, and the writings. So the method style of study, it is a process of study in the word of Ahia, Asha, Ahia, which is I am, that I am in Hebrew, the great I am, the Yah of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we seek his guidance and live in a kingdom lifestyle. The Torah is the most high Yah's teachings and instructions and 613 principles. It's where the creator speaks, mother. And then we search the witnesses through the books of the prophets, the Nevi'ins, and the books of the writings, the Ketavins, collectively the Torah, the Nevi'ins, and the Ketavins, or identify as the Tanakh, which is the Old Testament's proper title. And it's the only book that Yahuwah studied in reference throughout the New Testament. Exodus chapter 19, verse 6. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Say it again. Exodus chapter 19 verse 6. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words. Come on, y'all. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Today we look to the word kingdom. Hebrews number 4467 Mahalak. Dominion, extractly. The estate, rule or concretely the country, ram, kingdom, kings, reign, royal. The Torah testifies. Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 18. And it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write him a copy of this law in the book out of which is before the priests, the Levites. The prophets proclaim. Amos chapter 9, verse 8. Behold, the eyes of the Most High Yah are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth. Babylon must fall. Come on, this United States of America. Saying that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, says the Most High Yah. The writings bear witness. Psalms chapter 68, verse 32. Saying unto the Most High Yah, ye kingdoms of the earth, all sing praises unto the Most High, Selah. Oh, we have completed the method style of study this morning. Reviewing kingdom. First, we recognize the standard set in the Torah in 613 principles. Then we search the witnesses in the books of the prophets, the Nevi'ins, and the books of the writings, the Ketavins, collectively the Torah, the Nevi'ins and the Ketavins, or identified as the Tanakh, which is the Old Testament's proper title. And it's the only book that Yahuwah studied in reference throughout the New Testament. 5 a.m. prayer. The kingdom of the Most High Yah is nothing but his government. I'm going to say that again. 5 a.m. prayer. The kingdom of the Most High Yah is nothing but his government. The Most High Yah wants his government on earth through us as his citizens as he is in heaven. You must understand the, the importance of his kingdom being not only on earth but in our hearts. 
The kingdom being in our hearts means that we are his kingdom citizens and our kingdom citizenship is more important than anything. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 8. Therefore wait ye upon me, says the Most High Yah, unto the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation, even all my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Woo, all right now. Shalom Alekim. Peace be unto you, 5 a.m. prayer community. The Most High Yah is teaching and ingraining these kingdom teachings in our hearing because he's coming back soon. He made us to reign and rule and the time for us to rule and reign completely with no other system or governments of this world is near. Teshuvah, for the kingdom is here. What you say? Teshuva for the kingdom is here. So now, are you ready for the word of Yah? The father of Abraham, the father of Isaac, the father of Jacob. Are you ready? For the word of Yah, the father of Abraham, the father of Isaac, the father of Jacob. This morning we are coming out of our constitution. Exodus chapter 20 in its entirety, our foundation scripture. And I'm going to read it and read it and read it as John is in the wilderness saying, repent. For the kingdom of the most high Yah is at hand. Come on, law-abiding citizens. You need to know about your citizenship. Exodus chapter 20. In its entirety, and it reads, And Yah spake all these words, saying, I am the most high thou, Yah, which has brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I am the most high thou, Yah, and a jealous Yah, Visit to the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Most High, thou Yah, in vain. For the Most High will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thou work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Most High Thou Yah. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thou son, nor thou daughter, thou manservant, nor thou maidservant, nor thou cattle, nor thou stranger that is within thou gates. For in six days the Most High Yah made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Most High Yah blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thou father and thou mother that thou days may be long upon the land which the Most High Thou Yah giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that 
that is his neighbor. And all the people saw the thunder and the lightning and the noise of the shofar and the mountain smoking. And when they saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moshe, speak thou with us and we will hear. But let not Yah speak with us, lest we die. And Moshe said unto the people, Fear not, for the Most High Yah is come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces, that ye sin not. And the Most High and the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where Yah was. And the Most High Yah said unto Moshe, Thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Ye have seen that I, Yah, I have talked with you from heaven. Ye shall not make with me gods of silver, neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold. An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and sacrifice thereon thou burnt offerings, and thou peace offerings, thou sheep and thou oxen. In all the places where I record my name, I will come unto thee, and I will bless thee. And if thou wilt make me an altar, thou shalt not build it of hew stone. For if thou lift up thou too upon it, thou hast polluted it. Neither shalt thou go up by steps unto my altar, that thou nakedness be not discovered thereon. May the Most High Yah add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his most holy word. Kingdom concept number seven. Understanding the kingdom concept of citizenship. The most awesome power and position of national privilege is citizenship. Say it again. The most awesome power and position of national privilege is citizenship. Citizenship is the most valuable access of a nation and is not easily given because of its power and impact. All governments defend the right of citizenship with the same favor because of its implication. Citizenship is not membership. Say that again, Dr. J. Citizenship is not membership. See, when you was in the church, it was about membership. But you got to know now, you got to shift your mindset because you are in a kingdom. And kingdom citizenship is not membership. Religion functions on membership. Say it again. Religions function on membership. Why nations and kingdoms function on citizenship. In recent months, immigration has become a hot topic in some parts of the world. And we know that we got some brown children being held right now in cages. In recent months, immigration has become a hot topic in some parts of the world. For example, there is a rising concern among many Western Europeans that the continuing influx of Muslim immigrants from the Middle East will soon transform the entire religious, social, and cultural complexion of Europe. Recent sectarian riots in France over unemployment and many other European countries over the publication of blasphemous cartoons of Muhammad have revealed that little cultural assimilation among those immigrants have occurred. Of even greater concern, however, is the spectacle that has become or has been going on in the United States over immigration. For months, debates have raged over the status of millions of illegal aliens, mostly from Mexico, who live and work in the U.S., rally in support of these illegals, have drawn thousands out onto the streets. Some legislators have uh, proposed granting all illegal aliens currently in the country immediate legal status and placing them on a short track to American citizenship. Others insist that the U.S. government detain and deport any as many 
illegal immigrants as they can find and increase patrols at the U.S.-Mexican border to prevent further would-be immigrants from crossing over. Y'all better come on this morning. Mm -hmm. There are even some who have seriously proposed building a fence along the entire 700-mile length of the border. It seems that masses of people from south of the border are clamoring to get into the United States. Why? What draws them to risk life, capture, imprisonment, or deportation just to cross that border? It could be many things. Better jobs, higher pay, better health care, greater opportunities, and an all-around better quality of life than they feel they can get in their home country. For many... It is the lure of even the possibility of citizenship in a most prosperous nation in the world. People are attracted to a nation that appears to promise a better life than the one they are living where they are. Some people even become desperate enough to do anything they have to do to become a part of that nation. So the concept of citizenship is crucial to understanding the nature of the kingdom of heaven. Say it again. So the concept of citizenship is crucial to understanding the nature of the kingdom of heaven. As I said before, all governments and kingdoms operate on governing laws and principles. Citizenship is necessary for the validity and legitimacy of any nation. Not only that, but citizenship is the most scarce privilege of a nation. The power and privilege of citizenship. Citizenship has great power as well as great privileges. Y'all come on and wake up and go with me this morning. Citizenship has great power as well as great privileges. That is why people are willing to risk their lives and cross borders, even to the point of death, to pursue the hope of citizenship. Citizenship is not only scarce, but sanctified, set apart. Come on, Holy Spirit. A citizen is part of an elite privilege group. People who have lived as subjects of a foreign government rather than citizens understand this distinction much better than people who are born citizens. Mm. The same is true for people who have worked very hard to earn the privilege to become a naturalized citizen of their chosen country. As a sacred privilege, citizenship is the most precious gift that any nation can give. That's why there are laws to protect people from it and protect it from people. Mm -hmm. What you say? That's why there are laws to protect people from it and protect it from people. Apart from native-born citizens, Citizenship is neither awarded lightly nor obtained easily. Mm. Apart from native-born citizens, citizenship is neither awarded lightly nor obtained easily. Mm -hmm. And it shouldn't be. Citizenship is too precious a treasure to hand out indiscriminately like handbills. When it comes to matters of citizenship, the kingdom of the Most High Yah is no different from any other country. Remember, the kingdom of the Most High Yah is not a religion. Say it again, Dr. J. Remember, the kingdom of the Most High Yah is not a religion. It is a government with a country. It is a government with a country. Heaven is that country, and Yahuwah HaMashiach is its king. Mm -hmm. Referring to HaMashiach, the ancient Hebrew Isaiah wrote, 
For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. Like any other country, the kingdom of the Most High Yah has principles of citizenship. Mm. Like any other country, the Most High Yah's kingdom has principles of citizenship. And like the example of America, once people know about the kingdom and once they understand what it is and what it has to offer, they clamor to get in. Hmm. This is what Yahuwah was referring to when he said, the law and the prophets were proclaimed until John. Since that time, the good news of the kingdom of the Most High Yah is being preached. And everyone is forcing his way into it. Luke chapter 16, verse 16. Everyone is forcing his way into it. Once people learn about the kingdom of the Most High Yah, they can't wait to get in. Picture in your mind all those would-be immigrants desperately clamoring to cross the border. And then you will see what Yahuwah meant. Why then? Someone might ask, do we not see people clamoring to get into the church? What you say? Why then? Someone might ask. Do we not see people clamoring to get into the church? Why does the church as a whole seem to have so little impact on our culture? What you say? Why does the church as a whole seem to have so little impact on our culture? The reason is simple and sad. Huh? The reason is simple and sad. Most pastors don't understand the kingdom, so they don't preach it or teach it. is simple and sad. Most pastors don't understand the kingdom, so they don't preach it or teach it. Consequently, most of the people in the churches don't understand the kingdom either, so they don't model kingdom living. Wow. My experience has been that once people know about the kingdom and see it's modeled they want it. Come on now. Come on now. I'm watching Facebook Live right now. I'm watching the comments. I'm watching folks say, what is this kingdom teaching on 5 a.m. prayer? They're forcing their way into it. I want to know about the kingdom. Such is the power of the lure of citizenship in the kingdom of heaven. Becoming a kingdom citizen. Mm -hmm. Come on, Queen Adrian. Becoming a kingdom citizen. All nations, including kingdoms, have citizens. And all nations require immigration status. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of the Most High Yah is no different. Every kingdom citizen today is a naturalized citizen. 
we immigrate from a foreign country, a dominion of darkness. You better see Colossians chapter 1 verse 13, where we as a race had been exiled ever since Adam's rebellion in the Garden of Eden. At that time, the human race lost citizenship in heaven. We lost our citizenship because we lost our kingdom. And we lost our kingdom because we lost our property, our territory. Don't forget that without territory, there is no kingdom. And without a kingdom, there can be no kingdom citizenship. When Yahuwah Hamashiach began his public ministry, he announced that the kingdom of heaven had arrived. Uh -huh. That was the only message. What are y'all teaching? Because the kingdom was the only message that Yahuwah taught. That was the only message he preached. He brought back to earth the kingdom we lost at Eden and gave us access to it again. We enter the kingdom of heaven through the process that Yahuwah called being born again. You better see John chapter 3 verse 3. Changing our mind and turning from our rebellion against the most high Yah. Placing our trust in Yahuwah for the forgiveness of our rebellion. And acknowledging him as Lord owner over our lives. The new birth gets us into the kingdom of heaven. Huh. What you say? The new birth gets us into the kingdom of heaven. Many believers call this being saved. Come on now, and I'm about to teach you something. Many believers call this being saved. But I think it is more helpful here to think of the new birth as the naturalization process by which we become kingdom citizens. The new birth makes us naturalized citizens of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. It also naturalizes us in the sense that it returns us to our original natural state of authority and dominion over the earth as the most high Yah intended from the start. When we become citizens of the most high Yah's kingdom, it means that we voluntarily align ourselves with a new government and a new country embracing its language, its ideas, and its values. Hmm. The kingdom constitution is implicit regarding our citizenships. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with the most high yas and members of the most high yas household. Mm -hmm. According to Ephesians chapter 2 verse 19. But our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord, Yahuwah HaMashiach, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lonely bodies so that we will be like his glorious body. Mm -hmm. According to Philippians chapter 3 verse 20. Giving thanks. To Abba, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints and the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves. Hmm. Colossians chapter 1 verse 12 and 13. Not only does the new birth makes us citizens of heaven, but our citizenship 
begins immediately. Mm. We are kingdom citizens right now. What you say? We are kingdom citizens right now. Our citizenship is a present reality. We are fellow citizens with the most high Yah's people. Our citizenship is in heaven. The most high Yah has brought us into the kingdom of his son. Mm -hmm. Why is this so important? I thought you would never ask. Why is this so important? Why? Religion postpones citizenship to the future. What you say? Religion postpones citizenship to the future. Religious leaders tell their people, you will be a citizen someday. Hmm. Huh? Religious leaders tell their people, you will be a citizen someday. You will be in the kingdom. You will have joy later. What? Hmm. You will have joy later. You will be a full citizen, but not today. Not yet. The kingdom has not yet come. Hmm. They are wrong. Mm -hmm. Tell your pastor the kingdom is right now. Mm -hmm. They are wrong. The kingdom has come. Ah. Kingdom citizenship is never postponed. The kingdom of the Most High Yah is present and functional on the earth right now. If you have been born again, then you have been naturalized and are a kingdom citizen right now. And that means that all the rights, benefits, and privileges of kingdom citizenship are yours right now. Mm -hmm. You can enjoy your citizenship right now. You don't have to wait until some indefinite time in the future. Mm -hmm. You can never appropriate what you postpone. Say it again, Dr. J. You can never appropriate what you postpone. That's what you call looking up the kingdom of the Most High Yah to those who want to get in. Huh? That's what you call locking up, excuse me, locking up the kingdom of the Most High Yah to those who want to get in. It is for this reason that I am convinced that the greatest enemy of the kingdom is religion. What you say? That's why I am convinced that the greatest enemy of the kingdom is religion. Religion keeps pushing the kingdom away from people. You can't get in now. You can't experience it now. You can't benefit from it now. Wait until later. And so people suffer. That is why so many religious people live defeated, destitute, and frustrated lives. They believe they have to wait for their reward. Mm. Duo citizenship. Kingdom government exercise jurisdiction over their citizens no matter where they are. Come on now, Queen Regina. Dual citizenship. Kingdom governments exercise jurisdiction over their citizens no matter where they are. One of the main purpose that nations maintain embassies in other countries is to provide assistance to their citizens who are living or traveling away from home. Hmm. If you were to visit the Bahamas... And happen to lose your money or face some other crisis. All you would have to do is turn to your country's embassy and they would help you. That's what they are there for. 
One of the responsibilities of any government is to take care of its citizens, whether at home or abroad. In a very real sense, that's what the church is supposed to be, an embassy. The church is not a religious place. When Yahuwah established his ecclesia, he did not have a religious institution in mind. His purpose was to set up an embassy of his kingdom, a place where kingdom citizens, new and old, could receive aid, be trained in the ways, laws, language, and customs of the kingdom, and be equipped with the kingdom resources they need for effective life in the kingdom colony on earth. All kingdom citizens carry dual citizenship. Say it again, Dr. J. All kingdom citizens carry dual citizenship. Most governments on earth allow dual citizenship where citizens of one country may hold simultaneously legal citizenship in another. Mm -hmm. If you are an American or Canadian or German citizen, for example, you could become official legal citizen of the Bahamas without being required to give up your prior citizenship. Children born to citizens of one country who are living in another country generally become citizens of both countries. It is no different with the kingdom of heaven. All kingdom citizens are simultaneously citizens of the kingdom of heaven as well as citizens of the earthly nation of their birth or their naturalization. We don't give up our earthly citizenship when we become citizens of the kingdom. In the same way, we don't have to be in heaven to benefit from heavenly jurisdiction. What you say? In the same way, we don't have to be in heaven to benefit from heavenly jurisdiction. Our citizenship is constant and the kingdom government exercises jurisdiction over us wherever we are. The kingdom constitution says that we are in the world, but not of the world. Say that again, Dr. J. The kingdom constitution says that we are in the world, but not of the world. Even though we are in a foreign territory, actually, our government's colony, our registration is not here. When it says our citizenship is in heaven, it means that our registration, our official documentation is not on the earth. When we are born again, our names are written in heaven's official register as valid confirmation that we are now citizens of heaven, even though we still live in the colony. So even though we are physically away, from the kingdom country, we are still citizens of the kingdom. When Yahuwah stood before Pilate, the Roman governor of Judea, Pilate asked him, are you king of the Jews? In John chapter 18, verse 33, to which Yahuwah answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest 
by the Jews. Mm. But now my kingdom is from another place. John chapter 18, verse 36. It is important to note here, both that Yahuwah said, as well as what he did not say. is not in this world. Mm -hmm. Come on now, Most High Yah, open our understanding. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. Mm -hmm. He did not say, my kingdom is not in this world. He said, my kingdom is from another place. Mm -hmm. He did not say, my kingdom is not in this place. As the official representative of the emperor, Pilate possessed kingly authority in Judea, speaking as one king to another. Yahuwah acknowledged his kingship. In fact, he stated plainly, to Pilate, you are right in saying, I am a king. In fact, for this reason, I was born. And for this, I came into this world to testify to the truth. John chapter 18, verse 37. Hmm. And what was that truth? The truth that the kingdom of heaven had arrived. Mm -hmm. The only message Yahuwah preached. So Hamashiach's kingdom was in the world, but not of the world. It was from another place, but also resident here on the earth. It was here now, but it was not from here. Mm. So all kingdom citizens possesses dual citizenship in heaven and on earth. That status will continue until the day when the present heaven and earth pass away and the king recreates them both. Mm. Then there will be no more separation between the time will have come when the dwelling of the Most High Yah is with men and he will live with them. They will be his people and the Most High Yah himself will be with them and be their Most High Yah. Revelation chapter 21 verse 3. All that day, on that day, the government of heaven will exercise full dominion over the new earth under the co-regency of all kingdom citizens. Invisible citizenship. What you say? Invisible citizenship. Someone may ask, if the kingdom of heaven is here now, why can't we see it? You would. Someone may ask, if the kingdom of heaven is here now, why can't we see it? Why isn't there more evidence of it all around us? The answer is very simple. We cannot see the kingdom of heaven because it is invisible. And so are its citizens. In fact, all colonial governments and citizens are invisible. In the same way 
The fact that the kingdom of heaven is invisible does not mean that it has no impact. Yahuwah taught this truth about the kingdom more than once. No one occasion, on one occasion, he illustrated it this way. What shall I compare the kingdom of the Most High Yah to? It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into a large bowl of flour until it worked all through the dough. Luke chapter 13, verse 20 and 21. That's how yeast work, slowly but inexorably, until all the dough feels its influence. Mm. What's mixed with the dough? The yeast is invisible. What you say? What's mixed with the dough? The yeast is invisible. But if you think that it means no impact, just try baking bread without it. Huh. Ooh, come on, boss, hi But if you think that means no impact. Just try baking bread without it. Hmm. People have been debating the nature and timing of the coming of the kingdom of heaven for centuries. It was no different in Yahuwah's days. One day he spoke of the invisibility of the kingdom in response to a question from the religious leaders. Mm -hmm. Once, having been asked by the Pharisees, when the kingdom of the Most High Yah would come. Yahuwah replied, the kingdom of the Most High Yah does not come with your careful observation, nor will people say, here it is, or there it is, because the kingdom of the Most High Yah is within you. Luke chapter 17, verse 20 and 21. The kingdom of the Most High Yah is invisible. We cannot detect it simply by observation. And if the kingdom of the Most High Yah resides within its citizen, this means that all kingdom citizens are invisible also. We bear no physical or outward signs that broadcast to the world. I am a kingdom citizen. Our citizenship must become known in other ways. Citizenship is invisible. The only way you can actually know someone is from a particular place is by listening to them and observing their behavior over time. The same is true. Mm -hmm. The same is true with us as kingdom citizens. There is no way for people to tell by looking at us that we are citizens of the kingdom. Our language and our behavior should make that known to them. Mm -hmm. Baruch Atah Adonai, bless are you, Lord our God, King of the universe. Ooh, I think that was some Hebrew language. Our language and our behavior should make that known to them. In other words, they should recognize us by our distinct culture. Culture is a product of the language, ideas, and value of a people or a nation. Even though people cannot recognize us as kingdom citizens by our outward appearance, our distinctive language, ideas, and values should give it away. Our culture should reflect and reveal citizenship 
as being here, but not from here. As being in the world, but not of the world. Chapter principles. Hallelujah and bless your name. Principle number one. Citizenship is the most sacred privilege of a nation. Number two, citizenship is the most precious gift that any nation can give. Number three, like any other country, the kingdom of the Most High Yah has the principle of citizenship. Number four, Every kingdom citizen today is a naturalized citizen. Number five, the new birth makes us naturalized citizens of the kingdom. Number six, not only does the new birth make us citizens of heaven, but our citizenship begins immediately. We are kingdom citizens right now. Our citizenship is a present reality. Number seven, religion postpones citizenship to the future. Number eight, you can never appropriate what you postpone. Number nine, all kingdom citizens carry dual citizenship. Number 10, all colonial governments and citizens are invisible. Number 11, the kingdom of the Most High Yah is invisible. Number 12, all kingdom citizens are invisible also. Number 13, our culture should reflect and reveal our citizenship as being here, but not from here. Mm. As being in the world, but not of the world. Ooh-wee! So good! So good, so good, so good, so good. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless! His holy name. Now here are your next five principles under the second commandment. Principle number 163. You shall not eat in your cities the tide of your wine. Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 17. Principle number 164. You shall not eat in your cities the tide of your own. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 17. Principle number 165. You shall not eat in your city the tithe of your firstborn cattle and flocks. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 17. Principle number 166. You shall not eat in your city all your vow offerings. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 17. In principle number 167, you shall not eat in your cities all your free will offerings. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 17. Amen, 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 and amen. <laughs> Hallelujah, and bless your name, y'all. Hallelujah, and bless your name, y'all.
it truly. Look at what the Most High Yah is doing. Imagine me teaching on kingdom without the principles. So Doreen, Queen Doreen, he set you up when he said, I need you to teach the principles. You can't have a kingdom without the principles. Now you understand how it works hand in hand. is like really interfering in our for real business, for real. Did you ever get this in religion? No, no and no, and no. And almost, you know, you're not afraid, but you almost afraid like, oh, he really sitting right there. Oh, I'm about to come down off the throne, Dr. J, remember? Uh, allude, the man of allude, the king is in the field. I'm about to come visit y'all. I'm about to come visit you. Mm -hmm. The month of Alu starts August the 21st. I'm about to step down off the throne and come visit you. What you say? And this visitation, oh, it's going to be different. Because you're in a different place this time. I'm talking about revelation of the word of the most high Yah. I'm talking about seeing the word like never before. I'm talking about knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. So when the king comes to you, you can turn around and say, hey, Nanny, I'm here. And all the words that the most high Yah has spoken, we shall do. This is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. You would not believe this unless you were walking with 5 a.m. prayer. Now, this is, this is your first day on. You don't know what I'm talking about. But if you've been walking with us this whole time, he keeps walking us into revelation after revelation after revelation after revelation. You understand now when he says, if you seek me first, ooh, that, that little verse got a whole different meaning now. If you seek me first, the kingdom of the most high, yeah, then all these things shall be added unto you. And if you ask anything in my name, I will go to the Father, and you will receive it. <clears throat> I'm done. I'm done. Woo! 
so good, so, so good. And the Most High spake unto Moses, saying, Come on now, we about to go on out of here. Shema Israel, Shema Israel. And the Most High spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Most High Yah bless thee and keep thee. The Most High Yah make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious to thee. The Most High Yah lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And I shall put my name on the children of Israel and I will bless them. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Whew. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! So good! Come on, Pastor Keith Wilkins! So good! Sons of Yah, rise up! Talk like Malcolm and walk like Martin! No more compromising is confrontation talk. All right now. All right. Hallelujah. So get to the blog spot, get to Facebook, get to YouTube. It will encourage you. Have a supernatural day five. I love you, love you, love you. Oh, I love you. Bye now.